zombie. Plague of the Zombies was released in 1966 from Hammer Horror Films and takes on, nonetheless, zombies of course, voodoo zombies, straight from Haiti. Well, not really, straight from Britain, but learnt from Haiti from... Clive Hamilton is his name. Me and names, just get used to it. <laughs> they, uh, there's all kinds, and um, I lose track of them and then I have to look them up. So. This is, uh, <clears throat> this was actually released in the same year as, um, Dracula Prince of Darkness, and, uh, it, um, shot in, uh, or in color, well, technicolor, whatever you want to call it, um, and, uh, it was, it was pretty decent, um, definitely one of the slower Hammer films, I must say, um, I knew that going in, but, uh, I definitely like it's definitely present it's 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 a little bit slower um, a little bit more dragged out um, lots of plot holes in this one as well I must say um, but uh, it was still still enjoyable I wouldn't say it's bad or even boring or anything like that but it's definitely a little bit a uh, little bit uh, you know slower paced than the other horror or the other hammer horror films that I've been seeing but um, yeah we start off uh, with a voodoo ritual right off the bat. And there's this woman sleeping in bed who's being affected by the, the voodoo with, uh, with what this voodoo priest is doing. Um, with these little figures, which he uh, takes human blood and pours on these little figurines. They, they're kind of like voodoo dolls, but they look a little bit more solid, like they're made of clay or something like that, um, or plastic or something. And uh, again, like ink red blood, like ink red, like like tomato juice red, uh, famous in the Hammer series. Um, so she's basically being tranced in her sleep, and she's kind of repeating what the voodoo priest is saying, all this ubiga kind of shit. And um, so she she she's clearly having an an impact. She has this cut on her wrist, which starts bleeding more. Uh, the more blood he puts on this figurine, and the more blood goes on the figurine, the more blood she's getting out of her wrist. So we start with that, and then uh, it cuts to um, our characters, Sylvia and Sir James, James uh, Forbes, which is Sylvia's father. And they receive a letter from this guy named uh, Peter. And uh, Peter lives in Cornwall, and he's sending them... Um, James, especially this letter, which says that there's a lot of mysterious deaths happening in this little town of Cornwall, and um, if they could, you know, come and check it out and see if there's anything they can do about it, because uh, I don't know exactly what um, Sir James's position is, but um, obviously he has some smarts to be called upon. So him and uh, Sylvia go to this uh, little town of Cornwall. Uh, she also knows. Um, James's wife Alice from uh, back in the day school or childhood friends or something like that. Uh, so she knows both James and Alice, and they've been longtime friends. They go way way back. <clears throat> so she uh, she pops into this town with her father James, and uh, they start to uh, you know kind of figure out what's going on. And um, uh, James is a doctor. And uh, there's another guy in the town named Martinus who lost his brother to this mysterious illness that's going on with all these people in this small town. And uh, what, what happens with this illness is, you know, your basic zombie shit. Like, they, their skin starts to turn color, their body movements start to slow down, um, and then they kind of just die. And this doctor basically isn't able to perform any autopsies because the the town folk is uh like superstitious and old-fashioned and they don't want their deceased loved ones being poked upon and cut apart kind of thing so they they don't believe in autopsies basically so james just kind of has his his hands tied and can't really perform any so he has absolutely no idea how martin martinus's martinus yes martinus's brother died 
And Martin is just pissed because he's like, you're a fucking doctor. Why don't you know how my brother died? Um, and he's like, well, I can't perform an autopsy, yada, yada. And so there's that huge tension going on. And then we meet um, and, uh, our Clive Hamilton. Uh, did I mention? Cl yeah, did I? Clive Hamilton is, uh, is, he's basically, I wouldn't even know what to call him, but he's, he's a big name in the town. Like he's, um, he's a mysterious fellow, I guess. <laughs> There's no mystery to the movie. Obviously, you know that he's the one performing this voodoo shit. You just, the characters don't know, but right from the get-go, you know it's him. You know, because he wears a mask when he's doing the voodoo shit, but, uh, you still know it's him because everything kind of leads to him. And um, he he basically, or it's henchmen at one point even, uh, they go and like violently kidnap uh, um, Sylvia and bring her to the mansion. And um, uh, he, she, she's like, he basically like pretends to fight them off and be like, why'd you do this shit? But um but he lets her go. She threatens to call the police or go to the police immediately. And he's like, oh, please don't do that. Um, it would, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an esquire. That's it, an esquire. I don't exactly know what that means, but he's an esquire of this town, this Cornwall town. And he, he's like, I'm an esquire. I can't, like, have that reputation on me and shit. So that happens. And uh, he, uh, he ends up uh, stealing a little bit of um, Sylvia's blood at one point, too. And uh, later on in the, the film, he, he does the voodoo things again to, um, to uh, basically entrance them. And um, it's, it, from what I get, it, it seems that the victims need a cut as well. They need some kind of cut on them. So anytime him or his henchmen get, um, capture somebody, they make sure that they either like use a piece of glass or something to accidentally cut the the victim so that they can use the blood on this little figurine to entrance them and hypnotize them and make them all i must come to your master and stuff and later on i mean they're clearly using these zombies as slaves Be, you know as any voodoo zombie movie goes it's the purpose is slavery of these uh undead people to serve their master um the zombies really look classic they have like greenish ghoul faces like skin peeling all green though the classic like 60s and 70s green zombie look it they look really good for a classic zombie movie it's definitely got that classic zombie look and i love it and i love um there's a scene about an hour into the movie in a graveyard and that's when kind of all the zombies are being re resurrected. That is um, the best scene of the movie, very very easily. But I was, as I was saying, with plot holes, like they're just they're just everywhere in the sense where, like, you know, how is uh, Hamilton getting all like so much blood in vials from such little cuts, and how is this tiny town not realizing that people are disappearing because they don't get anyone really from outside of the town like it would make sense if they're bringing in foreigners and converting them into zombies or changing them into zombies but the zombies are pretty much from cornwall all of them so and they mentioned many times that this is a very small town <laughs> so stuff like that you know it's uh it's it's not as defined as the other hammer films i've been seeing but it's still a lot of fun and it's a guilty pleasure for me because zombie movies are one of my favorite horror subgenres there is. So I'm kind of biased in that way. I'm going to be 100% honest. But, um, but yeah, that's, uh, that about covers the synopsis and, uh, my thoughts on it. Um, it's, it's a classic zombie movie. It's enjoyable. Um, it's great if you like Hammer movies. I mean, if you don't like Hammer movies, this is probably going to be at the bottom of your list. But if you already are, if you already dig ha the Hammer Horror series, or you like other Hammer Horror films, I'd give this one a shot. If you love zombies, I'd give this one a shot, hands down. Um, but, uh, yeah, that about covers it. And, um, that's, yeah, that, uh, that's all I, I gotta say. It's a pretty simple film. It's, uh, 
it does its job. It uh, it looks great. Like it, it the cinematography is nice. Um, but um, it's it's the it's on like the weaker end of the the Hammer series. But for what it is, it serves and it serves well enough. And uh, that's Plague of the Zombies. Oh, and of course. These classic artworks are my guilty pleasure, and I love how Scream Factory releases both. So you just can, you can flip the artwork around, and and uh, I actually like the green one better. But and I think I'm gonna keep the green one. But like, can you can you like not love that? Like crucifix in the background, cheesy zombie, doomed to walk the earth as slaves to the Lord of the Living Dead, called from the grave by a mystic voodoo cult. Like, come on, come on, man. And then you got the new artwork. So the new artwork. So they give you both. And actually, that's why I love buying the um, collector's editions with uh, the slip covers. This is not a collector's edition. It just comes this way. But uh, the collector's editions with the slip covers, you can have the slip cover as the new artwork. And then underneath the slip cover, you put the old artwork and you can have both. So best of both worlds. That's what I like. But that's all I got to say again. And uh, if you've enjoyed this review, go check the film out. If you can find it, I'm sure you can stream it somewhere. Um, and yeah, that is my thoughts until next Hammer Horror Film Review, which will be coming uh, about a month because we're getting into 31 Days of Horror, so I'm going to be focused on that. But cheers until next time. I will be back soon, and thanks for watching.